All right, so in this week's guitar lesson, we're gonna talk about some blues ideas that you need to know. This is sort of classic blues, blues 101, and it's the kind of thing I used to hear blues guys doing when I was learning how to do this. I'd listen to a record, and I couldn't figure out what they were doing. I thought it was really difficult and above me, but then when I s figured it out, I realized it's really not that technical. So nothing in this lesson is technical. This is all stuff you can do. And I wish somebody had made a video like this for me when I was learning how to play. It would have given me a massive shortcut to, to learning how to do this stuff. So that's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to fit it into a, a short video, so a small amount of time. We're going to cover a lot of material. So in this video, we're going to go through the first half of that lead. If you'd like to learn the second half, download the tablature, download the MP3 jam track. Uh, you can get all those extras so that you can practice everything we're going to talk about by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP516. Okay, so this song that we're going to be playing, uh, this little blues, is in the key of A, and it's really just three chords. It's a 1-4-5 chord progression. A is your one chord, D is your four chord, E is your five chord. And I'm calling out those chords because we need to know those chords as they pass by because we're going to attach things to those chords. Little barnacles, we're going to stick those onto the chords so that when you're playing a D chord in the future, you'll have ideas for, uh, for that chord. And more importantly, we're going to connect it to a chord shape. So it's not necessarily super literal like a D chord. If you were playing a D sharp, for example, or another key, you'll be able to use these licks. It'll make sense as we get into it. Let's listen to the first part and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so the first thing that I'm doing is a series of harmonies. These are harmonized thirds. And remember, the song is in the key of A, so let me just give you my home bass. This is what I'm thinking. I didn't actually play this, but I pictured it. So I thought about my A chord right here using the E shape from the cage system. So this is where you bar on the fifth fret. These three fingers make up the, the E chord shape. I was picturing that, and if I made that co bar chord and I played strings two and three, I'd be playing these first two notes from that harmony. Index finger on the fifth fret second string, middle finger on the sixth fret third string. That's where that comes from. It also comes from this little A triad here, however you want to think about it, but I'm just playing two strings. Then I come up to the seventh fret and play strings two and three. Now this is where it gets interesting. Uh, and this will be your first little takeaway, your first blues idea that you can apply going forward. Anytime you're hanging out on a chord in a blues, which happens a lot because a lot of times they're slow and it, this, the chord will last for a while, you can always play the, the chord you're on and it's four chord. So if we're playing an A chord, you play the four chord of your A. And that's a gospel technique, so you can go... So it's an A, D, A, or up here, A, D, a, D, right? So in this blues, if I'm on the four chord, which is a D, I can play the D and the four chord of D, not of the key of the song, but of the chord I'm on. So I could go. So I'd be going from a D to a G. So that's one little idea. Uh, so, so I started with this, so that's my A. Playing those two notes are playing two notes out of my D chord from the A shape. Hopefully a light bulb's going off, you're starting to connect it. Oh, okay, so there's, there's logic to this, right? There's the um, A, there's my D, and then I came up here and went And that's like an A7, and that's another thing you can do. So you can go between whatever chord you're playing, and that chord's four chord, and then the seven, the dominant seven of the original chord. Hopefully that's not confusing. So in this case, you can play an A, a D, an A7. Back to my D. Listen to that. It's starting, I mean, I'm playing it, it's kind of chunky because I'm using the whole chord. And that's where these little harmonies come in because listen. And that's what I'm doing. So when I came up here and played uh, ring finger on the ninth fret third string and then my middle finger, I think those are the fingers I use, but it's eighth fret second string. That would be like my A7 triad up here. So that's the first idea. And when I played it, the timing went. So I hung out on that seven. I don't know why, it just felt right. And then I went back to the, the D and then slid in to my one, which is my A. That's another little idea, is you can start a half step down and slide into any of those. 
These are little things that does, it may not seem like much, but it adds a whole different level of sophistication to your lead by sliding in. It makes it sound more intentional. Like you know where you were trying to go. Um, okay, so that's the first idea. Now after that I went... This is another big game changer idea that uh, it took me years to figure this out. I'd probably been playing for 20 years before I understood what what this was. I would hear it in songs, and I think T-Bone Walker is probably where I thought of, or the first person I thought of when I heard that chord. And what I'm doing is I'm playing an A, remember we're still over the A chord, I'm playing an A6, sliding down two frets, which makes it an A9. Anytime you're playing a six chord, you can always go down two frets from wherever you're making that six chord, and you'll be making a nine chord of the chord you were making. Hopefully that makes sense. So let me show you the little shape here. And I'm connecting this back to my A chord here, my E using my E shape. Remember when you make that chord, you bar on the fifth fret. So let that fifth fret kind of be a root fret or a home fret. Put your index finger there, and then these three fingers make up what looks like the, the D7 chord shape, like first position D7. But when you play that uh, and you connect it to that E shape, now you can get to it anytime you need to. That's why you connect it back to those basic five shapes from the cage system. Because now if I need an A6, I know exactly how to get there. And if I want to play an A9, I just take my A6 and go down two frets. Hear how that works? And you can go chromatically as well. You can go. Now that may not seem like much, but you can get lots of mileage out of this. Now let's just imagine what we've learned here and apply it to the other three chords in this song. So even if we didn't learn anything else, you've got this. Watch this, here's my four chord. Here's my five chord. Using the six to the nine. See, I came up to my E chord. There's my E shape from the cage system, playing the E bar chord. And here's my D chord using the E shape. And so hopefully you're starting to see, oh, we connect those to those chords. So anytime I'm playing that chord shape, I can pull out these blues ideas. Okay, so now the song goes to the four chord, and right before I go to the four chord, I throw in this little lick. It's just a little fill lick, but let me show you. It's, it's between the seventh fret and the fifth fret, but we start on the second string, we go seven, five, then we go down to the third string, seven, five, and then we go down to the seventh fret, four string. And this is another little takeaway. You have, when you're playing in the key of A, you have between the fifth fret and the seventh fret, string one, two, three, four, and five. You can use any of those notes in a combination. So if I'm playing this, that's minor pentatonic, right? That's out of my pattern one. But then if I stayed in that seventh fret, fifth fret, then I'm into the major pentatonic scale pattern two. Hopefully you're seeing that. So major pentatonic scale pattern two is this little box, minor pentatonic scale pattern one is there, and they're all in the same little area. So that means if I want a little fill lick, I, I don't even have to think about it. I don't have to think, wait, am I doing major or minor? No, I'm just between the fifth fret and the seventh fret. The only string that that doesn't really work on is the sixth string. But that gives you lots of options for little fills. And you can slide into those notes. And that's what I did. So after that little fill lick, we go to the four chord, and I played this. And it's pretty similar to what we've already done for the, the one chord. What I'm doing now though, is I'm playing a D, so remember our four chord is a D, but we're playing the D9 to the D6, and then the D7, or the flat seven, dominant seven. And here's how you wanna think about this going forward. This will be your connection. 
Think about your D chord using the A shape right here. And when you make that, you've got one finger on the fifth fret, one finger on the seventh fret, right? Those are your keys. Those are your key frets. So if I play the fifth fret strings one, two, and three, and just play that little triad, when there's a D chord involved, I'm playing a D9. And if I move that up two frets and play, I'm playing a D6. Even though that triad could be other things, I realize it's a minor triad, but inside of a six chord is a minor triad. Inside of a nine chord is a minor triad. So that's why it works. It's just a little piece of a six chord and a piece of a nine chord. So not D9, D6, and then I kept that bar there and I put my a finger down on the eighth fret first string and that makes a D7. Think of your A7 chord, first possession. It's the same thing, you're just doing it up here. Hopefully you get that. And that's how I played it. And then I go back to that same little idea of between the 5th fret and the 7th fret. That same little box, 5th fret, 7th fret, any of those notes are going to work. Some of them are going to be major, and then some are going to be minor pentatonic, but it doesn't matter. We're staying in the key of the song. I held that one for a while and pushed it a little bit sharp. So then the song goes to the E chord, and I play this. And what I was thinking about was what we already talked about over the D chord. I just did the same thing. Remember, when you're playing, you're going from your four chord to your five chord, whatever you do here, whatever little idea you do for your four chord, you can always just slide it this direction, two frets, and do it again, and it will represent your five chord. So remember, for the D, we had our D9 and our D6. Well, for our E chord, we've got our E9 and our E6, and that's what I did. I went, so that little first one was like a, it's almost like just playing the D for a second, and then we go into the, to the E chord. So E9, walked it up chromatically to the E6, and then I grabbed this E note up here on the 12th fret first string. So, easy to play, right? It's not technical, but I want you, to, don't just memorize it. Understand that this, represents your E chord from this shape. So if you ever want to use that little idea in the future, and let's say it's a C, you could go C9, C6, All right, hopefully you're getting that. Then following your typical blues format, we go from our five chord to the four chord, and I came back to my D ideas, I went so that's my D7, my D6, slide that down two frets, I've got my D9, so... And actually I just played that, that one string there, fifth fret, first string, because I was going to use this lick. So that little lick, look at the lick, it's between the fifth fret and the seventh fret. It's that same box I keep going back to. So five on the first string, we go to the seventh fret and play uh, second string. 5th fret, 2nd string, and then back to the 5th fret, 1st string. So we have... Isn't that cool? Very simple, elegant sounding though. And it has a, sort of a sophisticated sound, but it's not difficult at all. And then the song goes to the turnaround, which is back to the 5. We go to our E7, and I played... Now this time I stepped out of the bounds just for this one note here, and that's going, actually it's not, it's still in the key of the song, but it's the uh, A minor pentatonic scale. So I'm up here on the eighth fret second string. So we go eight, seven, five on the second string. And then we're gonna come down to the third string and play seven, five, so. And then there's the, the major third, that makes it sound major, right? Uh, for the key of the song, which is A, so. 6th uh, fret 3rd string, 5th fret 2nd string, and then you hit that same note an octave lower. So that would be my E note, and then my E note down here. And when I played that, I used my ring finger, so look at this, my other fingers 
can fall into place and play the chord. And that's just one of those things, you gotta learn this little technique. When you're playing the five chord, you see blues guys do this all the time. No matter what lick you're playing, so that you can go right into that chord. I mean, you can play it with other fingers, but you're hitting that note and you know where that chord is in relation to that note. It's the C7 shape. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this part one video right here. Come join us in part two where we'll go over the second half and we'll talk through, basically using the same jam track, we're just gonna talk through a whole new set of ideas. But as you're practicing what we just talked about, just remember to take any of these licks. Don't just memorize them without context. You have to connect them back to a chord shape. Every single lick that I showed you is connectable to a chord shape. Once you can do that, you can retrieve it in the future in any key and use it really in any style of music, not just blues. If you've liked this video, leave me a comment. I always appreciate it. Uh, when, as we're making these videos for YouTube, we, we're very insecure, or at least I'll speak for myself, I am. And I always like to hear from people and just sort of know uh, that things are resonating. Also, give me a thumbs up. That helps with the YouTube algorithm and all of those things. All right, we'll see you in part two.